Well, The Masked Singer is a ratings goldmine for Fox, and we are here with the Unmasked Director, Alex Rutzinski. Uh, for Gold Derby, I'm Marcus James Dixon, and this is Denton Davidson. And I, I guess the first topic, Alex, would be, you know, The Masked Singer was able, luckily, to avoid the whole coronavirus pandemic. You guys had fin finished filming by the time it started shutting down Hollywood. So how lucky did you feel that you weren't impacted and that the season got to just air as planned? Yeah, hugely lucky. Hi, Marcus. Hi, Denton. Um, I, I think, listen, it's, it's been, the pandemic has been transformational in so many people's lives. And, and, and uh, it was, we were just very lucky to be, uh, to be kind of wrapped and done and dusted but before everything took off and everything shut down. Um, but I'm glad we did because I think in, in these times, it's great to have uh, an entertainment show such, such as Mars Singer that everyone can just um, extricate themselves from the reality and the craziness of the current world and just have great multi-generational family fun sat around that sofa watching it every week. Yeah, I would say um, I was talking to my niece who's eight years old and it's her favorite show to watch before she goes to bed. And I said, you know, I'm gonna talk with somebody from The Masked Singer, what do you want me to ask? And she goes, how do they oh, do no. their costumes? And, you know, aside from the, the celebrities that come on the show, you know, the big star is the costumes and what goes into the team making those and how much uh, impact does the celebrity have on that? Do they sort of a lot of, a lot of um, <laughs> the the uh, we, so so we have an incredible design department, you know, from from the get go and, and uh, they're truly, truly gifted individuals. Um, Listen, we, we, we pitch a load of, of different ideas to the network every season as, as to what characters could be. We have a, a pool of obviously creatives within the, the show that, that dream up ideas. Um, you know, the taco, you know, who would have thought about that? Um, you, know, uh, for, for, you know, everything in the great fun about Mars Singer is, is that you can kind of embrace mm -hmm. the weirdness and, and, and the surrealness of it all. And so you can imagine, you know, we get to go to work every day, come up with names such as that, and they, people pay us for it. It's insane, um, but it's so much fun. Um, in terms of the, the, the outfits and the costumes, we pitch a load of creative to the network. Um, and then to a degree, we pitch them to, to the, the, the singers themselves, you know, because we want the singer to feel comfortable with that with that name, with that nomenclature, and, and ideally to feel that they resonate somehow internally with the story of, of that specific to characterization. So, you know, it's, it's a hybrid of, of many different uh, people and, and creative departments and the singer themselves wanting to feel comfortable with that character uh, image. Um, you know, and there's also some practicalities there because certain things, you know, these, I know the costumes look fun and they are fun, uh, they can be incredibly challenging to wear. Some, some of them are, you know, upwards of 200 pounds. There's no AC in them, so they're like saunas inside. Uh, that, that proves hugely challenging for, for some of our singers, um, but also for the production team as well, because we're limited to how long they can stay on stage. Um, and, you know, what you really don't want to have is, is an, an artist or a singer fainting whilst they're trying to perform. You know, you're really trying to give them the best chance to perform in front of an audience, both in the studio and to the viewers at home. So there are some limitations on what we can design and what we, we can't do. But, um, but, but yes, it starts off with, with a fair degree of flight of fancy and then a lot of people have input. And you've had a lot of success, especially recently with live production, like uh, Jesus Christ Superstar and Greece, and it makes me wonder: Do you think Mass Singer will ever go live in front of you know America, and maybe that would let people at home vote and, and cast some you know? Votes We've definitely the talked about it. We've definitely. It's yeah. a really good. It's a really good question, uh, and I think uh, it's it's on the cards. I, whether the whole season would be live is is, is a different question. Um, I think one of the one of the challenges, listen, the, the show's been very successful in certain other territories. Uh, I think Germany is one, they actually run it live. And so we've been you know, laser focused on seeing how it does in other territories and what we can pinch from each other. And of course you watch your, you know, you watch your fellow brothers and sisters around the world and see how they produce the show. And if there's any, anything that we can take from their shows. 
I think uh, there is definitely potential to do a, an amount of the show live, whether it would be the entire season. I'm, I'm not quite sure where that would work. I think the way that we we run it, which is, you know, we obviously don't shoot uh, exactly 43 minutes. We shoot a lot longer than that. And then we can edit down the judge mm -hmm. comments and the clues and get, get the best moments of all that. And, and that creates a certain pace and rhythm. So for me, coming from a, you know, from shows like Dancing with the Stars and uh, that, that are live, there, it's a two-sided sword because with a live show, you get this visceral energy that I don't think you can get on a non-live show. But sometimes you're also at the, at the whim of the judges a little bit in terms of if they choose to truly run over with a topic or a, a conversation, sometimes it's hard to rein them in or, or to get the right nuggets of, uh, out. And for Mars Singer, it's really important because it's a guessing game, really, isn't it? We're all playing along as part of a game. And so you want to get those, those little notes and, and, and knowledge nuggets out of, the, of our judges, out of our detectives as much as possible. And sometimes being able to edit that helps the audience at home a little bit to tell the story. Yeah, and just watching the show, it looks like there's so many moving parts going on. And then you always see the behind the clip scenes clip of them walking past with their masks on. And it just makes me curious, you know, what is sort of a typical day to prepare for that, you know, episode of like, how long does it take them to get in their costumes and, and get everything set up? Yeah, I, I, you know, uh, it's a tight turnaround. We 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 do um, they do vocal training when, when they when they when they they're part of the the singers are part of the the editorial discussion about choosing the tracks that they want to perform. It's not just them. It's it's making sure you know the tracks available to be able to perform that the network are happy with it, that we're happy with it, that it helps tell the, the overall story of that character. But if everyone's on board, then we usually start. Uh, they they start rehearsing that song usually within the week leading up to the, the taping of that episode um, from a vocal point of view. Um, and then as a creative team, we, we, we decide as to whether how to stage that song, how best to tell that story. And it might just be a character, you know, some of the most powerful moments of Mars Singer have been individual characters. I think of T-Pain, I think of Monster just being in a singular spotlight and just having the intense power of the voice can be, can be the most powerful staging. But then I also think of, you know, T-Rex this season, and we were doing giant Bollywood numbers with dancers and multiple dinosaurs jumping around the stage, you know, and they were full on kind of Oscar style presentations that require a lot of uh, rehearsal and choreography and everything else. So you're trying to get that breadth. You're trying to make it fun and entertaining for, for everyone to watch at home. Uh, and, and ideally for, for no two performances to be quite the same. Um, so we're always trying to lean into fun, into the fun of it all. They generally rehearse the uh, on set for the first time the the day before, um, and we will do some programming. And they'll generally get a half hour slot on set the day before, and then the day of, um, we we might have like a ten minute uh, kind of little camera dress rehearsal sequence, ten to fifteen minutes dress rehearsal sequence, and then we tape in the afternoon. Not a long time on stage. It's quite it's quite short. Looking back at the first uh, three seasons of the show, is there a celebrity or one or two that you couldn't believe agreed to do this? I Sarah think Palin. personally, man. <laughs> say that again. Sarah Palin. I was going to say Sarah Palin as a fan. I, mean, I remember. So here's thing. the thing. I don't know. As the director on the show, I do not know who these people, I swear to God, I do not know who these characters are, which is great for me because I get to play along in the control room. There's probably like 16 people in totally. A lot, a lot of them are from network or from legal. Um, obviously, some, some, you know, one or two close stage managers because they have to be part of the, 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 the donning of the mask process. Maybe one audio guy because they have to mic them up and put their ears in for the performances so they can get a balance on their vocal performance. Um, but the, the majority of a crew of 150 people have no idea. So we're all playing along in real time, which is fantastic. Um, Sarah Playman blew me out of the water. I had no idea. I mean, I, I, and I'm, I have to get, the other secret is, is I'm pretty rubbish at guessing. I think in, in season one, I, I, I temporarily guessed uh, uh, Peacock with Donnie, uh, but I don't think I went for it in the end. He was one of my guesses, but I don't think I landed on it. 
Um, I might have got one or two in every other seat. I mean, Sarah blew me out the water. I didn't even get Tom Bergeron on. I spent 10 years working with Tom on Dark Tom. <laughs> Humiliating for the to say the least for me. My favorite part uh, about Sarah Palin one was that Robin guessed Tina Fey. And of course, she played her on SNL. Yeah. So I'm like, right, it's an irony, right? Yeah. I mean, listen, I, I love. I love the breadth that we're dragging people from every every walk of life, whether it's politics, sports, um, you know, young bloggers or YouTubers that are coming on. I, long may that continue. That 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 you know, this show just doesn't have any borders in in, in terms of how where we pull people from. We, we just really want to continue getting from every age group from every aspect of life and such a ripped fabric of, of color that comes into our show. I think that's what makes it so endearing to watch. You know, and speaking of Sarah Palin, who's a rapper, of course, um, rap and hip hop <clears throat> actually made like much more of an impact in season three. You had Bow Wow, who was hugely popular as the frog and even Rob Gronkowski. Bow Wow nailed it. Nick, can I, I thought Bow Wow was going to win, I have to say at one point. And, and I, I get why Candy, but but I, I you know, my, my money was on Bow Wow when we got to the final three. I just thought there was, there was a, there was, you know, some of those hip hop performances were just so full on and so tight in terms of the execution. I was like, oh, this is a no brainer, but you know. But and was um, that a deliberate decision to, to start bringing that in or did it you uh, know, just, no, no, I think, you know, I think, I think from our creative director, our creative team and our choreographers, you know, if you have an artist that can perform well, then they have a reasonable chance of getting maybe to the final third of the competition. Um, just because if they're a great overall entertainer, if they can sing and they can perform the great dance routines, then there's a, a a, a, you know this visceral energy to their performances and that's endearing and that that tends to carry the the judging panel and the audience and whip them up into a, quite a frenzy so that can help propel them through the season um if they're an all-rounder a little bit but 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 no ab did we as a team think no we're going to try and major on hip-hop a little bit more of this no absolutely not um it's just it's just the way it felt that it landed uh and sometimes even you wrap the season and, be and because you know we're, we're still crafting this you know it's really 50% in terms of the taping and then 50% of the craft is in the edit. And I, I do feel, you know, sometimes that narrative story of the season only really emerges in the edit, which is, which is a fascinating thing to watch come to life. Um, I'm a big fan of all reality shows and, and Survivor just hit season 40, Dancing with the Stars is around 28, I think. Do you see The Masked Singer running that long? And Isn't that great? Right? I hope so. Yeah. Do you think? You know, I think uh, it's again. All I'll say is it's 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 great to get in at the beginning on a new format. It's great when a format is so successfully globally because you feel you really tapped into something that is, uh, you know, doesn't matter what language it's in or what culture it's in. That is just truly um, richly entertaining um could it could it run 25 seasons wouldn't that be amazing but i i just all i care about is that that we keep leaning into the the weirdness of it all because i think that's i think when so many shows feel quite derivative of each other to have a show that is truly kind of far out there and weird and like that's just ridiculous you know it's kind of fun and i think it's it's just it's a nice counter to, to so much other programming that's out there. So I say bring the weirdness on. Let's have more of it. Uh, and part of the part of the fun is the clue packages uh, that are put yeah. together before the performances. A lot of those packages, I mean, they get pretty emotional in the packages. And even after some of the performances, when they speak to Nick Cannon, so I mean, there's been times where I'm like, I think they're crying in their mask. Have you been surprised at how the show has impacted? Like, there are, there are so many tear moments. They really are. I think, you know, also part of it is for a lot of the artists, they would say emotionally, there are elements of baggage within their own life in terms of what they've been through. Uh, they can be personal struggles. They can be struggles that have been in the spotlight uh, uh, and have been witnessed with their fans. There's a freedom to performing in this outfit behind this mask 
that they find so personally endearing that it, it, it can it can manifest itself in very deep emotional responses for them and, you know and they and they they feel they feel that they can kind of exercise their true selves and often they're not often their their image out in the in the wider world has been locked into a certain a certain persona they feel like they can they can almost hit a reset button by donning these outfits and i think they find that very liberating and therefore um yeah the the, the emotional side is something perhaps we didn't expect would be so prominent when we started uh, season one but it's definitely become a great you know and again an endearing element to watch and, and and to to it gives you more depth to the characters and that's always more interesting to watch i think and, and interesting to try and pull clues from as well well we are huge fans of the show and i think the best question i could ask to, to end it would be do you have a dream celebrity on your bucket list that you're hoping one day would put on some something silly Um, I, there, there are so many people, um, I just think anyone, anyone that, that is, is, is a consumer entertainer, so, someone, someone that would, so many people spring to mind, so I'm not going to give you one, but I just think someone that goes against preconceptions and, and that, you know, uh, is, is gives you this left field kind of performance that you have no idea and just you know everyone flips and just goes crazy at, at that sort of i there's no way i could have believed that person was on the show and i i think i think in a sense you know there there's an opportunity for us to stunt cast you know and as as, as the show gets a higher and higher profile i think you know and you look at the likes of bringing sarah on this season I think there are some very interesting potential uh, personas moving forwards where people would think, I can't believe they would be on a reality show like this. And yet, in a sense, it's also a perfect format for them to, to show their real selves. So um, I, I, I think we have some good options to you coming. I, we're already in pre-production for season four, which is, which is a fascinating challenge in this current climate. And I think mm -hmm. when we start shooting that in, in three, three or four weeks time, uh, you guys, the audience are going to be uh, shocked when they see some of the, the people who are unmasked from that. So I look forward to entertaining the public in, a, in, a, in an even more uh, fascinating and crazy and weird way. Watch your space. Great. Well, thanks for chatting with us. Uh, last year, you got nominated for the best costumes for the show. So yeah, we are across that the voters mark you down in many, many more categories because you certainly deserve it. Thank you guys, I really appreciate the love and uh, stay safe and healthy out there, Marcus Denton, take care.